What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, uh, what's going on guys? I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I haven't sound checked, I haven't, uh, I haven't even looked at this in post. I have no clue how this is gonna end. My girlfriend's over here laughing at me. I have no idea how this is, how this is gonna turn out and I won't know until post and I'll probably upload it anyway. What the hell ever. Anyway, uh, Essentially, comics explains a teaching channel, so why not teach it like a treat it like a classroom or something like that? Um, yes, there will still be comic panels because you guys got to know what the heck I'm talking about. The topic of today's video: What has Captain Marvel been doing since whatever the heck it was she first showed up in the 1990s? Um, all right, movie's not out yet, so we don't know definitively, but there are a couple ideas floating around. In reality, all right, Captain, let's talk about Captain Marvel for a second. Like, who is Carol Danvers? Who's Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel was Marvel, really is Carol Danvers originally, she was Miss Marvel, but she was the answer, Marvel's answer to Wonder Woman in 1968. She was popular until the late 1970s when her solo series ended, uh, and then she was rolled over to the X-Men, and then Chris Claremont said, ta-da, you have the power of a white dwarf star, which made her binary, what does that mean? She can do whatever in the hell she wants to. Uh, in comic book terms, we call that hashtag comic logic. Doesn't have to make sense, just has to work. Uh, and then she free-floated for 25 years and became popular in 2012. So that's basically the entire concept of Captain Marvel in a nutshell. Anyway, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the question people have is what has she been doing? Okay, what Captain Marvel has likely been doing, markers, what Captain Marvel has likely been doing <laughs> since the start of the, since the, since, she been, since her movie probably ended, between the time that her movie ended and the beginning of Avengers 4, is fighting in a conflict known as the Kree Scroll War. All right, what is the Kree Scroll War? Okay, imagine that the United States and Britain were at war with each other. And imagine that Atlantis, whether it's fictional or not, is an actual continent that sits in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantis would be the Marvel Comics equivalent of Earth with Earth itself being the entirety of the universe, right? So like the, the home planet of the Kree is called Hull. The home planet of the Scrolls is called Skrullos. At least it was until Galactus destroyed it, but that was their home planet. And the idea was that if either race conquered Earth, that they would have a strategic advantage over the other race. So if the Scrolls conquered Earth, they'd have an advantage over the Kree and vice versa. The, the basis behind this goes back, God, forever. It goes back years and years and years and years, probably like, like millions of years, like two to three or, you know, millions of years. And the reason why is because somewhere along the line, the scrolls themselves became an enlightened monarch. And the reason why was because originally the scrolls were basically a war-torn race. What this means is that the scrolls, as you'll see them in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, are actually what are called deviant scrolls. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. But basically they can shapeshift. It's like the only real power that they have. The basis behind the enlightened monarch was that literally the, the royal, I guess the rule of the scroll race still follow alongside royal lineage, but they were more of like explorers and artisans as opposed to like warriors, right? And then like the Kree were still a relatively primitive race at the time that the scrolls, the scrolls were expanding their empire. And so the scrolls showed up on the Kree planet of Hala, which was occupied by two races, the Kree and then the Kotadi. So imagine group, but with leaves. And so the idea behind this was the scrolls said, we want to expand our race. We're going to test the two of your races and we're going to drop you guys off on the blue area of Earth's moon. What does that mean? The blue area of the moon on Earth is basically a portion of the moon uh, that has oxygen. Whatever, comic logic. Anyway, they dropped them off. They said, we're gonna leave you guys here for a year. We're gonna give you resources and we're gonna come back at the end of the year and see what you guys built. When the year was up, the, the, the Kree race had built like this giant citadel for themselves and the Kotadi had built this lush jungle. And because the scrolls were a enlightened monarch, they said, we like the Kotadi more than we like the Kree. And so what it meant was that the Kree were literally like just pissed, like they were really pissed off. They killed the scroll emperor who showed up. They killed the scroll delegation. They reverse engineered the technology. And then the two races went to war where they've been fighting for however many millions of years. And it's been going on like that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So what's likely going on here is that at the time the Captain Marvel movie drops and at the, between the time that the movie ends and the time that Avengers 4 picks up, this has been going on in the background the entire time. That's basically what's been happening here. Now, there were a couple of other things that went on in Marvel Comics with regards to like how the, the Kree Scroll War impacted things. So what you had is you had the original Marvel, right? Like this, this guy's name was literally M-A-R. 
R uh, dash V E L L. I'm pretty sure that's how you spell it. It was Marvel. And he was essentially just like this Kree soldier, right? And so the idea was that the Kree sent him to Earth to see whether or not Earth could be conquered. And then he basically turned against the Kree Empire and joined the Avengers. What this did is it led to the arrival of, of, of Jude Law's character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe Captain Marvel movie, a guy by the name of Jan, I think that's how you spell it, Rog. Jan Rog was basically a general for the Kree Empire, but he ended up harboring a personal vendetta against Marvel due to the extreme patriotism, for lack of a better word, of Jan Rog and the fact that Marvel committed treason. There were a couple of things that went on behind the scenes, doesn't really matter. Anyway, the Kree Scroll War became, became exceedingly close to Earth and almost led to like a full-scale invasion of Earth by the Kree, I think it was. And there's alternate reality stories in Marvel Comics, like what if stories where like the Kree actually invaded Earth. In fact, during the original Age of Ultron story by Bendis, there's a future where that actually happened and Earth was just like derelict. It was absolutely bonkers and war-torn and all kinds of crazy stuff. Anyway, because of how close the Kree Scroll War be, uh, came to Earth, what you ended up having is you had a handful of guys. You had Professor Xavier, Professor X of the X-Men. You had Black Bolt, which I hope you guys can see this. Black Bolt of the Inhumans. He doesn't really matter because Black Bolt sucks. Um, you had Black Panther. And then you had uh, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, for those of you guys who are not familiar with comics, uh, Reed Richards. You had Doctor Strange. And then you had Iron Man. And then it wasn't until Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers that we found out that Captain America was actually part of it, which was kind of weird. But the idea behind this is that these guys essentially formed a group. They formed a group that was called the Illuminati. They formed a group called the Illuminati. And the idea behind the Illuminati is that they were basically going to safeguard Earth from threats uh, by pooling all their information together. Because Professor X had various bits of information about the Kree Scroll War, so did Black Bolt, so did Black Panther, so did Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, and Iron Man, but none of them really worked together. And that's why the Kree Scroll War came as close to Earth as it did. And so the idea was that if they had pooled all their information together, the conflict would, have, would never have come as close to Earth as it did, and Earth never would have been in jeopardy of being conquered and or destroyed. And so forming the Illuminati, they said they're going to safeguard everything. The first thing the Illuminati did was they banished the Incredible Hulk. And they said, we're going to send you to a different planet where you're basically going to live in peace. And ultimately, the Incredible Hulk flew through a gravity well, which landed him on Sakaar. And that's where Planet Hulk picks up, which leads to World War Hulk and all that kind of cool stuff. But what this means is that for the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a lot of things can come out of the aftermath of the Kree Scroll War. I wouldn't expect them to come out like that, right? Like, I wouldn't expect a post credit scene at the end of Avengers 4 with, like, all these guys forming the Illuminati. But what it does mean is that there are a litany of circumstances that can be developed as a result of this whole entire conflict. Because in reality, in Marvel Comics, it was a landmark event. It was one of the biggest events and one of the, like, really the first major crossover of its kind that Marvel had, had, uh, had developed. It was actually written by a guy Written by a guy, who was it? Oh, it was written by uh, Roy Thomas. That's not really important, but just a little bit of information. Anyway, um, kind of digressed here, you know, towards the end. But that's the basis behind this, is that most likely Carol Danvers has been fighting alongside the Kree against the Scrolls in the Kree Scroll War, and has been doing that the entire time. What state the Kree Scroll War is in, we don't know. And if anything, if, if it's anything like Marvel Comics, then from there, it'll just turn into what'll likely be like an expansion of the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So what you're gonna start seeing, if they start focusing on the universe as a whole, if they leave Earth and they start focusing on the universe, well, then you get the Zenlobians, which is the race that Silver Surfer belongs to. You get the Shi'ar Empire, which you probably won't see. The Shi'ar Empire has a weird name. Uh, it's, it's weird the way it's spelled. It's basically S-H-I apostrophe A-R. But the Shi'ar Empire is the race that basically coincides alongside like the Phoenix Force. Um, which means you can start diving into things like that. There's a litany of places they can go from here, all based off of the Kree Scroll War and using that as a means to catapult into like the bigger universe in a much larger way. I don't know if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. 
Uh, let me know what you guys think about the this format. I mean, again, this is kind of like a one-off. No idea if it'll work. I'm kind of curious myself, if I'm being honest. Uh, but with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. <laughs> and I will catch you all later. Peace.